COP28 adopts a deal to transition from fossil fuels and Iraq's central bank and FAB to finance trade in dirhams. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes and Ramia Faraj. Delegates at COP28 have approved a first ever climate deal for the world to transition away from fossil fuels, tackling the top culprit of climate change after years of avoidance. The agreement calls for transitioning away from fossil fuels in energy systems in a just, orderly and equitable manner. It calls for expanding action in this critical decade and recommits to net zero by 2050 in hopes of meeting the increasingly elusive goal of checking warming at 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Iraq's Central Bank and First Abu Dhabi Bank will finance their foreign trade and imports in Durhams. Financial transfer operations and funding trade and imports between both countries in Durhams will be carried out through FAB. Financial transfers in Durhams began today with five Iraqi banks in Phase 1. More will be added gradually. In a similar move, the UAE signed a deal in July with India to settle their trade in local currencies instead of dollars. Zara owner Intidex saw a 32.5% jump in nine-month net profit from February to October to $4.42 billion. The results are in line with analyst estimates, most of whom are still betting on the company's ability to sell fashion even faster. It comes as Zara pulled a new ad from its website after calls for a boycott as the campaign was seen as mocking victims in Gaza. The capital loss from Renault's sale of a first portion of its shares in Nissan will amount to $1.1 billion after the transaction was carried out via a share buyback. Renault sold a 5% stake in Nissan for $826.6 million as part of a rebalancing plan agreed by the two companies as part of an alliance. It's part of a series of divestments planned by Renault to cut its stake in Nissan to 15% from around 43%. That brings us to today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires Ranking, which tracks the daily wins and losses of the world's wealthiest people. Our biggest loser today is Oracle's Larry Ellison, down a whopping $15.5 billion after the tech giant reported poor performance and the share price dropped 12.4%. Ellison now has $129.8 billion. Our second biggest loser today is Gautam Adani. He's down $2.4 billion with net wealth of $71 billion. And our third place loser is Elon Musk, down $2 billion with net wealth of $243.1 billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. Eurozone industrial production declined by more than expected in October, 0.7% month on month for a 6.6% year on year drop. The month on month fall was chiefly the result of a 1.4% decline of output of capital goods, as well as 0.6% falls for intermediate and non-durable consumer goods like food and clothing. The Eurozone economy contracted by 0.1% in Q3 and expectations are that it will decline again at the end of this year, confirming a recession. Britain's economy shrank 0.3% in October from the month previous, raising the risk of a recession. Economists had expected no change. It was the first time since July that GDP shrunk on a month-by-month -month basis. The Bank of England is widely expected to keep interest rates at 5.25% at its meeting tomorrow as it tries to ensure Britain's current 4.6% inflation rate is brought under control. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.